Hello everyone, I'm Janet Salmons. I'd like to talk with you about visual and virtual interviews. Rogers suggests that we think about whether we are conducting the kind of internet research that can be performed by simply importing conventional methods online, or whether we want to make use of the natively digital approaches that take advantage of the unique characteristics of the digital milieu. And I suggest these visual approaches do just that. Because what does our online communication environment look like? Increasingly, it's visual. The ease of taking pictures with our devices and sending images or links to images means that more and more often, we are moving, as Cress observed, from the dominance of writing to the dominance of the image. So how can we make use of this unique potential for our research? I particularly like these two quotes because they suggest that perhaps questions don't have to be asked in words and that when we pay attention to what our participants show us, we may have access to a very different world than we would by simply listening to their words. So, what if we present our questions visually and look for answers from our participants to be generated visually? Reading qualitative online interviews, you know that I've introduced a typology of online visual methods. So, on the first column, I'm describing the kinds of activities we can do online. We can transmit images, we can view images, we can navigate within visually rich environments, and we can generate images. Then on the other side, it describes the kinds of interactions we might apply in a research context. So sometimes we may find that we are dealing with a very complex phenomenon, one with many parts and relationships different concepts that can be communicated more simply with a diagram or a mind map. That's what we mean by visual communication. Visual elicitation has been used by researchers for a long time, and now we can do it online. And this means using visual images to elicit a response and get the conversation started with the participants. In visual collaboration, we're talking about actually not only generating images, but generating images together from within the interview. Here, I've laid out four main types of communication technologies that we can use. And as you know from the book, I try to describe these by the kind of nature of the features versus by a brand name or a platform or a product. So here we we'll start with the text-based communication that even though it's primarily in writing, allows us to transmit images from mobile devices. Second, we have video conferences or video calls that allow us to see each other and also to send images and media. Multi-channel meeting space, the kinds of web conference meeting areas that are kind of in all of the above. They include many different ways to communicate, including the use of shared whiteboards and shared applications. And finally, virtual worlds or games with the ability to view and navigate in visual environments. I've been talking primarily here about interviews but we can also collect visual data through related observations. And those might include posted images or media, archives, or observation that includes note-taking and um, images from whatever the phenomenon is that we're uh, observing. So let's look at a few examples. For visual elicitation, in this one, I've created two very simple diagrams that would allow the participant to respond by 
describing which was most closely aligned to the ways that their leaders and team members relate. They, using shared whiteboard tools, they could also add to these diagrams and uh, perhaps put in other members, other leaders, other relationships, etc. But it you know, would get the conversation started. Or we could use photographs. Here we could ask the participants to describe how they feel when they enter this big school and what kind of relationship between teachers and students most closely uh, compares with the ones that they have. Or we could ask the participants to take pictures of their own experience and then tell us about them. In this example, the participant generated this map to show the re complex relationships for the situation uh, of her work life and her projects. So rather, it would have taken a very long time to explain all of these elements and the, the different kinds of relationships, but they could be presented very simply and then the conversation could go from there. Or we could do that same kind of generating of uh, diagrams from within the interview using shared whiteboard tools in a web conferencing space as is shown here. In this example, I started with a very basic continuum and asked participants where their aspirations fell along this continuum. And then when analyzing my data, I was able to put together a kind of a map that showed where all of the participants fell along that continuum. In this very different example, in virtual world, we can create a, an environment where the interview can take place or where a discussion with um, a whole group of participants could take place. In this image, we see the kind of uh, safe and quiet environment uh, as represented by the bars that shows that this is a space where no one can eavesdrop or come in and interrupt the study. So in the Qualitative Online Interviews book, you've been introduced to the continuum between structured and unstructured and given some thought about what that means for verbal questions. But I suggest the same kinds of th thought process needs to go into your decisions about visual images because you have the choice to use a structured approach where you use the same visual stimuli with all participants or on the other end of the spectrum to use the, um, the participant generated visuals or the kinds of visuals that are generated from within the interview that would be uh, unique to each participant. So in summary, going back to this typology, there are many different ways we can creatively integrate visual images and combine them with our verbal uh, questioning in an interview to not only bring out some very different kinds of responses, but also to build some interest with our participants in the study and, and engage them so that they feel they've really contributed something interesting and been a part of uh, a valuable research experience. You can learn more, of course, in qualitative online interviews and in other materials posted on my website. Thanks.